Hi everyone, Sandy here for Country Craft Creations. I'm excited to share my December project using Authentiques Romance Collection. I am going to be making, showing you how to make the Love Notes chest with removable inserts that go inside the chest. Uh, I'll be using this collection. This is Authentiques Romance, which are labeled as Romance 1, Romance 2, etc. So this is one of the papers here that I'll be using. It's uh, really beautiful with the postcards and the roses and then the roses on the back and the stripe. Then I have this brick in Romance 2 with the pretty uh, lacy pattern. I also have the collections uh, elements. These are not stickers. These punch out so that you can make them dimensional if you want to. This is the same one again. There we have the Romance 3, which is this really, really pretty um, small pink weathered wood look with the dots on the back. Then we have Romance 4, the black hearts with the check here on the side. Romance 5, diamond pattern, beautiful roses. And I do have two of each of these pattern papers in the Authentique Romance Collection. I'll be making this main project and then from my scraps I'll be making two more smaller projects for my December projects for Country Craft Creations. This is a really nice stripe in Romance 6 with the borders here on this uh, back side. Romance 7, small hearts. You can see that in the pattern and more flowers on the back. And then we have the cut aparts, which is Romance 8. These are lots of fun. You can see all of those. And that's more on the other side. So I have two of those so I can use, utilize both sides. Then, of course, I have the Spectrum Authentiques Antique Lace, Black Jack. Old Glory and Red Licorice. So I have those. These complement the Romance Collection perfectly. I have two full 12 by 12 sheets of the medium chipboard that I will be using. As well as I may be using some of the items either in this project or the other two. I have lace matching or coordinating seam binding ribbon and a real pretty silver frame and I have some graphic 45 ATC ivory tags. Of course I will be using for my adhesive my art glitter glue, possibly some score tape to finish this project. So let's get started. To create the chest, I'm also going to be using the Artisan cardstock by Country Craft Creations in the craft color. So you need a package of that. And I have pre-cut my chipboard now down to size. So you need four 8 inch by two and a half, four 4 inch by two and a half, and two 8 inch by four inch. We'll also cut from the cardstock, from the artisan cardstock, you will cut four pieces that are eight inches by eleven inches. This is for the bottom of the uh, chest and for the top of the chest. So you'll need four pieces, two for each set of uh, chipboard that you've cut out for your uh, box or chest base and your chest top or lid. So we're going ahead. I'm going to show you how to do it on one. The second one will be identical. So let me set those aside. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to piece our two pieces of cardstock together to wrap and assemble the box part for the chest. So just put a line of glue. I like to use the art glitter glue that you can order from Country Craft Creations. Now in the winter time, you may not be able to order it because it's not shipped during the winter uh, to cold locations to where it's freezing, as it will freeze. 
I know there's other glues that still ship. They say they don't freeze, but I don't know if you can really count on that because anything that has water in it can freeze and change the consistency of your glue. So just be real cautious about that. So burnish on both sides really well. Wipe off any excess glue. I'm looking for my boat dry baby wipe here. There you go. And you want to burnish it really well so that it sticks down. You're also going to want, if you have it, eighth inch score tape. Instead of quarter inch, we're going to use eighth inch spaces. Now you can um, make you a shim out of chipboard if you don't have the tape. I like to use the tape to assemble my projects. So let's grab our pieces for just one half of this box so you have your, your main one. Now you want to make sure this seam is lined up in the middle. Also take your ruler and add about the inch mark. Just line this up straight and draw you a pencil line for placement guide. I'm just going to draw it all the way across. Okay. Then I'm going to take this first piece here, and this is going to go here. And I'm going to just center it. So I'm going to go ahead and take my glue. And glue this one down. Center it with the seam. Kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect. But you don't want this seam at any joint. There. Now then you're going to take if you're using the score tape, I'm just going to line this up right against the edge here on the top side only. And I'm going to take the main piece and this is going to butt up against the score tape. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. And to make sure I'm getting it straight, I'm going to take my ruler again and I'm just going to place it up against this chipboard and keep it straight and line this one up with it. Right, there we go. Okay, so now we need score tape along this top edge right up against, it attaches down onto the cardstock, right up against the edge of the chipboard. You also want some here on the main section, just along the edges. This is a great spacer to make sure all your distance is the same to bring your box or your chest piece together. Okay. This long one is going to go right up here. So I'm going to go ahead and get my glue. Put that up. So you have a little more space down here than you have up here, but it's going to work out just fine. Three quarters of an inch to an inch for wrapping. And then here, we're going to line this one up on the sides. These are the short pieces. And one more. Now you will do the exact same thing for your second half of your chest or the box. these will be wrapped independently. We'll have a top and a bottom. Okay, and let that dry for just a bit and turn it over and burnish these some. And then we're ready to start cutting. So I had a little bit of excess here on the right side so I cut about a half inch off 
to make those more even. This is a little shorter and that's okay. So now I'm going to grab my scissors and I want my flap to be in with this long one. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to cut right along the chipboard of my shortest, my shortest chipboard. Just cut along the end of it. Like that. Turn around, do the other side. This is where it's going to fold down, just like that, and this box is going to come up this way. So I'm going to go ahead and turn this. I'm just going to make a cut to the fold line here on each side. ahead and trim off this and I'm going to do it at a slight, I'm going to get my bigger scissors because I can cut better with that. I'm going to cut, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut these down on the ends to make them the same width here. You don't want them bigger or longer. So just cut these flaps down a little bit, make them even with the opposite chipboard. There we go. One more. Now then. So I'm cutting away this excess here. should look like this now. So you've got where you're going to wrap the edges and then you have your flaps here that you're going to attach your box section together. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a little miter cut here for these flaps. Kind of at an angle. This will all be covered up with pattern paper once you've assembled your, your box. Now some of your patterning you can do before you bring it together. I just like to go ahead and do mine after it's been assembled. You do what is easiest for you. So I will be showing you how I do mine. But if it's easier for you to pattern it right now, then that's what you would do. So, now I'm going to go ahead and burnish these flaps. Now I like to take, I put glue, I use glue on mine, I put glue right up against the chipboard. And then of course glue, you could use score tape to bring these together if you wanted to, to wrap these edges. Sure that it is burnished good, especially there at that seam. And right here on the top here, where the seam is, I'm going to make sure, put a dab of glue there and make sure that it all stays well put together there really good. I'm going to do the opposite side 
glued right up against the chipboard line. And then more glue for the flap. Bring this together. Really burnish that seam. Dark glitter glue dries clear, so you don't have to worry about that. Now you've got this turned down. If you need to trim a little more on your flaps, you can do it like that. Okay, check this one out. Okay, so let's do the other ends. Now, if it looks like it's sticking over just a little bit too much, you can definitely trim that off a little bit as well. Right there on the ends. I didn't notice it so much on that one, but these I do, so I'm probably I didn't cut it enough there on the side. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with these. Glue right up against the chipboard. Make sure I get a good line of glue there. And then the flap. Burnish it down. how it's going to come together with your flaps. And we can cut those down even more if we need to. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these flaps down just a little more. Probably cut off about an inch on each one. Because we don't need those along the flaps. Because I like to attach mine to the outside to give me the finished corner. Okay, so on all four of those, just trim it down about an inch. And remember this is going to, the flaps are going to be covered by paper, so it's okay if they're not exact. So let's go ahead and pull our backing off of the tape in the spacers. Let's go ahead and get all those pulled off. Grab some kind of pointy tool you might have to uh, grab that. Makes it a lot easier. And just pull that up. This one, this one doesn't want to pull up, but we'll get it. There we go. Now then. We are ready to bring this together. Again, I said if you wanted to pattern some of this while it's flat, you can, but we do have to attach our hinge. So you definitely don't want to cover the one that's going to be the back of the hinge. Um, but the rest of it you could if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and pull mine together and do the patterning uh, after it's assembled. So what I do is on one end, I'm going to put the glue right here in the seams 
And like I said, you can put yours to the inside. I like mine on the outside because I have finished edge. Now there are different ways to make boxes and whatever way you like. And if you have the, the end results the same, well, that's just fine. So I'm glad, grabbing some clips here so to hold, hold these corners. So I'm gonna bring this up. Now, if you wanna put some glue in here, you can. That makes it just extra strong. I'm gonna bring this up. Bring this side in and match them up. Match up these corners. If you need to trim off some of your flap, do that before you attach it down. Just right here. Get it pulled really tight and lift mine up just a little bit. Pull it really tight as you can. Art glitter glue dries pretty fast, but a clip helps, gives you an extra hand, so to speak. This one needs to trim a little more here. There we go. Get some glue down in there. A little extra glue here. Because you want it really tight. You want a really sturdy. here in the corners. There we go. I'll clip that one and then we're ready to do the other one. So I'm going to trim these before offhand just a little deeper right there. Make sure they're not sticking out. It's a little easier when there's no glue. There we go. Okay, so we're ready for the other end. And this will be one of our chest bases. So I'm just put some glue right through here. Right along this chipboard edge. On the flap. Bring it up, match your corners here, pull it really tight. And your last one. There you go. Okay, so let's let that dry a little bit. And while that's drying, I'm going to make my second one, bring it together. You go ahead and do yours exactly the same way. So you do two of these exactly the same. I also have the Tickle Pink Spectrum paper. So this is what I'm going to use in the bottom. Now, before we put the chest together, it's important that we go ahead and pattern the bottom and these sides because then we'll be making our folders and putting them inside the box. So let me go ahead and cut this and start matting the inside. I'm going to do the inside bottom with the pink and then one of the patterns on the side. So I'll decide what I'm going to do on that. So I've cut my bottom piece. It is just a little bit under four and a little bit under eight because I want it to fit in pretty tight. So dry fit that. These are the sides, a little bit under eight, two of them, a little bit under two and a half, just like a sixteenth of an inch. So you need, and then you need two, a little bit under two and a half tall, by just a little bit under four. Now, I'm going to go ahead and pattern all of it, but the back side. So I'm going to take my pencil, I'm going to label this back, right there. 
go ahead and ink the edges of your papers if you desire. Uh, really on these, all you really need to ink is the top edge, but I'm going to go ahead and do all four right quick. Now I'm using the lacy part. You could use the brick side. It's pretty too. Oh, I think it would look really interesting. But I'm making this kind of a lacy valentine type looking chest. So this one piece will not go in. I'm going to put the bottom one in first. And I'm going to go ahead and use my glue. Fit that in. I've already dry fit mine to make sure that they fit in. So you drop it in and it fits right up to the edges. Take your bone folder and burnish in there. Your bone folder or your spatula. Now this one here in the bottom here, you're not going to see that much. Um, it's going to have all the folder holders, the placeholders inside there. So let's go ahead and pattern the two sides and the front. So let's try to fit this real quick. And it might be just a tad long. So I am going to trim that down just a little. Right there. Okay. Glue. And I'm putting this on the front side only, on the inside of this bottom section. I'm pushing it all the way down so then I have a slight margin here at the top. Just like that. So then we'll do the ends. Let me double check those. And those fit good. Or that one does. Do always dry fit every piece you cut. Once it's glued down, and if it's too long, it won't work. Or if it's too short, it won't look right. There's that end. And then the other end as well. Dry fit it. And then glue it in. So the inside of this bottom section piece of the box or the chest is patterned on the inside. And now we're going to make our hinge. You need to decide do you want to do the cardstock hinge or do you want to use actual metal hinges. If you do then you're going to want to go ahead and um, prep your uh, top piece. I'm going to use a cardstock hinge and I'll show you how. Cut another piece of the artisan cardstock, one piece seven and a half long by four inches wide. Score the four inch side and a half, then fold it, and I'm going to burnish it both directions. And this is our hinge. Now, if you're concerned about that, you can add some tape across this. Um, I don't have any handy with me, so I'm just going to leave mine this way, but you can put some matte scotch tape uh, right along the hinge side. It will make it a little shiny there, but it will add a little bit more protection to it if you're concerned about that. So I think it's going to be fine for mine. Now then, we're going to put this in before we pattern the back side. And you want to make sure that the fold line is right along 
the inside of the box. And you want to center it. This is seven and a half. Your box is eight. So I'm going to fold this in half and I'm only going to put glue on one side. Take this and line it up, center it side to side. So you'll have about a quarter inch on each side. Line it up at the top along the edge of the box. So this is your fold line up here. And then open this up and let's burnish that in. Okay, so now then this is the hinge. It's going to attach to the lid piece. So now we can go ahead and pattern this with our other piece of lacy pattern paper. And again, this is a little long. So I'm going to trim it down just a tad. Make sure it fits. Okay, add some glue. and burnish in. So that's the base of our Love Notes box. This is our hinge sticking up here. We're going to leave this, this away. We're going to make our um, hinge pieces, our placeholders or folder holders in here and our folders before we do anything to the outside. The outside patterning I'm not going to do on camera. I'm going to let you do that on your own. I will show you my finished one. You can go ahead now if you want and you can pattern the inside of your lid except for again the back side. So I'm just going to mark mine as back in here and you're going to pattern this the same way. The inside of the lid um, depending on what you're going to use for a handle, you might want to decide on that now. So let's wait on this lid part until we're ready. So let's go ahead now and make our placeholders for inside this box. In the next video, I'll show you how to make your folder holders for the inside of the chest and the folders. So stay tuned for video number two. Thanks. Bye-bye.